Okay, so I'm sure your curriculum textbook is going to be full of interesting questions about quadratics that don't look like quadratics at first. For example, here's one about riding my bike along a road. The question says, here's a 120 kilometer stretch of road. So I ride my bike along a 120 kilometer stretch of road at one constant speed. So I'll go at some constant speed, I don't know, V, all the way along the cross. And then coming back, I ride my bike back 10 kilometers per hour faster along the same stretch of road. So coming back, I'll do the same stretch of road, but my velocity will be V plus an extra 10 kilometers per hour. Got that? So one constant speed this way, and then one constant speed back, namely 10 kilometers faster than that constant speed. And my question says, note that I was one hour quicker riding back. So I was actually, since I was going faster, it took me less time. In fact, I was one hour quicker going back what were my two speeds? What was this initial speed and what's the speed plus 10? If it took me one hour quicker to get back by going 10 kilometers per hour faster, what was my initial speed? What was my final speed? Can you work this one out? This is quite the quadratic problem. Good luck. Okay, this game with quadratic equations can get quite quirky and interesting. For example, look at this equation. The square root of x plus 2 equals x. Doesn't at all look like, look like a quadratic equation. However, it is one in disguise if you change your mind about what the variable is. Now, normally you think the variable is x, but let me think of the variable being the square root of x, because this is the square root of x, sure, plus 2 equals the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared. Some variable squared, some variable, and a constant. So actually, it is a quadratic equation. We'll write in the standard way that the quadratic equation wants. Uh, the variable squared, then the variable term, and then what's to be a minus 2 equals 0. So if I rewrite the equation this way, then it really does look like a quadratic equation with the variable square root of x. In which case, we can use the quadratic formula and see the square root of x is to equal something or something. Great. In fact, try it. Maybe try the quadratic formula right now. But, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve this equation a different way and notice something strange because if you start changing your, the, what you think is the variable, then you've got some care to be taken most likely. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of x equals x minus 2. Okay, that's fine. And they could argue, all right, I don't want to work with the square root of x, let me square both sides. So x would have to equal x minus 2 squared. In which case, I can expand this out, so in my mind, I'll draw a little x minus 2, x minus 2, so I see this is really x equals x squared uh, minus, two, uh, minus 4x and a plus 4, is that. I've got x over here and some negative 4x's over yonder, so I put it all together, x squared minus 5x uh, plus 4 equals 0. So I'm now playing with that quadratic equation, which really is a quadratic in the variable x. So let me do the quadratic formula, since I'm meant to be practicing the quadratic formula. I think I'll do the square method myself, but quadratic formula, I'll do it right now. x is negative b, 5, plus or minus b squared, 25, minus 4 times a times c, minus 16, all over twice a, 2 times 1, 2. Got that? That was fast. Was, was it okay? Um, square root of 9. So 25 minus 16 is 9, so this is the square root of 9. So this is x is either 5 plus 3 over 2 or 5 minus 3 over 2. So it's 8 over 2. It's 4 or 1. x is 4 or 1. All right, looking good. And you say, well, done, done, not done. But watch out. Danger. We're not done. x equals 4. Let's check it. Square root of 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Beautiful. x equals 4 works. 1. x equals 1. Square root of 1 is 1, plus 2. Left hand side is 3, but the right hand side is 1. Doesn't work. We got a false solution. What's going on? In fact, you can kind of see here that 4 does work. The square root of 4 does equal 4 minus 2, but the square root of 1 doesn't equal 1 minus 2. That equals negative 1. Oh, oh, that's the issue. Square root of 1 equals negative 1? Well, we would say that in arithmetic, but here's the thing. We changed our variable to be the square root of x, 
And when we use that symbol, the little radix with the vinculum, that's the name of that symbol, a radix and a vinculum, we mean the positive square root, in which case we're restricting our minds of what types of numbers this could be. We want this to be the positive square root, we would not look at negative one as a possible answer, therefore we're going to get ne ne um, nebulous solutions, some, some you know, extra solutions going around because this didn't care about positive or negative roots, it just accepted everything. But back in the original equation, it's got some care. We only want the positive version. When you use that little radix symbol, that means I really mean geometry. I mean the positive root. So that's why we've got some, you know, something going awry there. So watch out. If you've got a very interesting variable when you play with an equation, sure, you might do some standard things and get some solutions, but you might be getting some extraneous solutions. So if you're going to start changing what the nature of the variable is you play this game, you better just go back and double check just to make sure something weird didn't happen. Got that? Kind of fun. So watch out for weird quadratic equations. It never hurts to check your solutions to make sure nothing strange occurred along the way. Okay, so let's finish off today with the opening puzzler. That is, try to find me two numbers whose sum is 10 and whose product is 26. Could you do it? Actually, let's do it together now. So I'll make this look mathy by bringing in some variables. Um, so let's call the two numbers P and Q. I'll go with P's and Q's this time. So we're told that P plus Q is 10 and the product P times Q is going to be 26. Can we find two values, P and Q, that satisfy these two equations? Actually, we only need to find one value. If I find the value p, then this first equation tells me that q would be 10 minus that value. So once I've got p, I'll have q. So let's just focus on p's then. That makes sense, because once I've got a p, q's going to follow. All right, so let's look at the second equation, focusing on p. p times q, well, q is 10 minus p. p times 10 minus p is 26. Uh, let me expand this out. 10 p's minus p squared is 26, and we have a quadratic equation in p. Um, I might bring the p squared on this side and the 10 p on this side, so think of this as p squared minus 10 p plus 26 equals zero. Great, so there's my quadratic equation. Now just to practice, practice the uh, quadratic formula, um, let's look how many solutions this has. Well, in fact, let's look at both solutions. So p would have to be negative b, 10 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. The reason I'm focusing on that because I happen to know something weird is going to happen right now. I can see it. I can see it in my brain. I don't know if you can see it yet. b squared, negative 10 squared, 100, minus 4 times 1 times 26. 4 times 1 times 26. 4 times 26. That's 80 plus root. That's minus 104 all over twice a. Twice 1 is 2. Square root of a negative number, square root of negative 4, cannot do it. Zero solutions. Do you see that? In fact, the reason why my brain saw it right off the bat, because I saw this, I have, I've been doing the quadris method so much in my life now, I can actually see this as p minus 5 squared plus 1 equals 0. That negative 10p, I want the number 25 there. So it's 25 plus 1. So I could see right away, we are so in trouble. It's not going to happen. Something squared is not negative. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Turns out, no solutions. You'll never find a pair of numbers whose sum is 10 and product is 26. All right then, so here's the real question for you. For which values of k can this puzzle be solved? For which range of values of k is it possible to find a pair of numbers whose sum is 10 and product is k? What range is that going to be? 26 is out of that range, 25 and 24 were in that range, give me the complete range. Ha! Huh. Alright, so I'll see you next time. This is good stuff.